You're very welcome back. Now, today is National Sibling Day and it got us wondering, does being the eldest, middle child or youngest sibling have an impact on your personality traits? Well, to chat about this, we are joined by Dr Vincent McDarby, President-elect of the Psychological Society of Ireland. Good morning, Dr Vincent. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Vincent. Good morning. Um, let's jump straight in in terms of, because we've been teasing this all morning in terms of siblings and where, where you come in the family and there's a lot of myths around it. Does it actually have any significance where we are, where we land in the family? Yeah, well, I think what you're referring to there is what's called the, the birth order theory, which basically, you know, is that, you know, where you are in the family has impacts on your personality. And I suppose it would have first kind of, would have been first put forward about 100 years ago, ago by a, a psychotherapist called Alfred Adler. And what he said was that, um, you know, one of the things that impacts on personality is birth order. So he would have said, like, firstborns would tend to be high achievers. They would tend to be conscientious. You know, later born or last born would tend to be risk takers. They would tend to be artistic you know, and, and kind of second and third born would be kind of the peacemakers, you know, um, diplomatic. Now, now, interestingly, he himself was the second born, but there was there was no, he didn't put forward any scientific evidence to what he, he postulated, but it really took hold, you know, and a lot of people really kind of grabbed hold of this. And, you know, up until re recently, there was actually a lot of research that seems to suggest this was true, but... In more recent times, we've looked back at that that research, and we can see it was it was flawed for a number of ways. You know, so like one of the things a lot of the research would have asked parents to rate different children on different personality traits. So if you have something like just say for instance conscientiousness, so one thing we know about conscientiousness is that as children grow older, they become more conscientious. So if you were to ask a, you know a parent you know to rate your children in terms of the conscientiousness, they're more likely to rate their oldest child, which is their firstborn, as more more conscientious. So you know that that can you know, from a research point of view, if not looked at correctly, can lead to the belief, well, actually, okay, firstborn children are more conscientious. Well, it's not actually a factor of personality trait, it's actually a factor of age. Another thing that wouldn't have been, you know, wasn't always taken into account was, was family size. So if you think about it, if you're if you're a third born or a fourth born, by the very nature of being third or fourth born, you're not from a small family. So if you're if you're a first born, you're you're more likely to be from a small family. And what we know about small families is that they're they're related to socioeconomic factors. And I suppose to give an example, you know, there's a perception, particularly in the States, that, you know, all these Ivy League schools are full of firstborn uh, children, you know, and it, and it kind of feeds into this myth that, okay, you know, they've got these personality traits that actually, you know, they're highly driven, that, and that's why they're in these Ivy League schools. But if you look at, for instance, Harvard, like, so this year, the 2021 class of Harvard, firstborns make up 40% of it. So, I mean, that's huge. And you think, well, wow, okay, that, that, must, that must prove this, this birth order um, uh, theory. Well, well, Vincent, you, let's talk more, through more... some of the, the common traits, first of all, and then maybe how much evidence uh, backs up those traits. So in the eldest, you mentioned how conscientious the eldest might be, uh, reliable and cautious, uh, quick to take charge... Yeah, um, the, the reality is we, the, the, the research doesn't show it, you know. So in the last 10 years, we've looked at, you know, what we would we would look at kind of what, what I call the big five personality traits, you know, so kind of five broad components of personality. They would be openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism. Um, and when we look at those in relation to birth order, we, we don't find an association. We, we find a small association with birth birth order and intelligence, but it, it's, it's very small. It's maybe one to two percentage points, and it's probably down to the fact that if you're first born you get a little bit more attention initially until the other children come along but there there really is no uh, research showing a connection between any personality traits and birth order what about anna was talking about your, your first born or the eldest child in terms of the middle child people would say that they're often more often a people pleaser than other people they can feel left out or undervalued so they thrive on friendships often a, a more of a go with the flow approach does that sit do you think no, it, do, it doesn't sit with the research, you know, and that's the problem with, mm. with this birth order theory. It's, it's very much so believed, you know, and it's very easy pick, you know, examples that will confirm your, your, your belief. You know, it's very easy to pick out, well, look, let's look at Oprah Winfrey and Barack Obama and Sheryl Sandberg. They're all first born. You know, they've got these traits, you know, we, we can look at people who are second born and pick out traits. And the same, you know, with, with our own children, you know, we can look at, OK, my second born, born has got some of those traits. My first born has got, got some of those traits. But when we look at populations, as a whole, which we do in research, we don't find any connection between personality traits and, and uh, birth order. 
I think it's very interesting that point you made earlier on about the eldest tends to be more conscientious, but that's related to age because we're all, you know, as, as babies, you know, you'd be a little bit more reckless because you don't know what the heck's going on. And of course, with age, presumably comes conscientiousness and also awareness of those around you. So that to me sounds like a valid point. You know, you would say your eldest child is the most conscientious. Well, that's because of the oldest. It's a learned behavior almost, is it? Absolutely. You know, they're more, they're more conscientious. And as they get older, they get more conscientious, you know. So, you know, a, a nine-year-old is going to be more conscientious than a seven-year-old, you know. And mm. um, by the time the seven-year-old becomes nine, he's going to be as conscientious as his nine-year-old brother was. But now the nine-year-old brother is 11, he's going to be more conscious <laughs> again. So, yeah. so there is very much so a relationship between the age of the child and their level of conscientiousness. There is that dynamic. The youngest child really rings through for me here, thinking about my own youngest and the third child to arrive in our household. Usually the most free-spirited of the siblings, <laughs> natural charmers, typically outgoing and sociable. That really kind of rings home for me yeah, as me, yeah. the youngest in my house. Simon's nodding here yeah. as well. So is that much yeah. more common? Yeah, you, you will see, like, this is not to say that, that birth order doesn't have an impact on siblings and siblings don't have a relationship on each other. They absolutely do, but it's not in a systematic way. So it's not that we, we can say that, OK, younger children are going to be, you know, have, have you know, pers particularly personality traits. There's so many things that impact on kind of uh, children's personality characteristics. You know, their siblings, their family, their environment, there's so many other things, mm -hmm. but it's just the, 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 the birth order theory, really, there's nothing behind it. It's a fascinating topic, nonetheless. Dr. Vincent McDarby, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Stay safe and well. Thanks, Vincent. Thank you. I thought I'd leave out the last little bit, attention-seeking and manipulative yeah. younger ones. Best not to go They there. can be, can't yeah. they? Yeah. Right, stay with us. We're talking pastels and neutrals on the catwalk after this quick break.